Hello and happy Thursday traders. This is Trader Tim from over at eminimine.com doing the trade recap video for uh, Thursday the 23rd of April 2020. Uh, before I get into the ES day trades, I wanted to start on a little bit bigger time frame and talk about some swing trades. If we look at the SPX, we can see a pretty strong sideways bias here for the last week. Uh, lots of gaps occurring, but we really haven't deviated too far from this, this halfway point. And the swing low that I've been looking at to break is this one right here from the 13th. And if we look at the S&P, and if we pull from lows to highs, uh, you can see we didn't quite tag up on the 50, but we got close. And when we break through a negative 23% target, uh, I get the question, you know, what is the, what's the minus 6184? for? And that helps us get an idea of how strong the move is. And so when the market is moving <clears throat> very strongly in one direction, to where we don't get any kind of retracement at the at the negative 23% target, and we keep going past that level, uh, that's when the extensions come into play. And um, I've got a handful of videos on those uh, in the the VIP section of the member dashboard. But to give you a, a basic overview overview here, instead of going from low to high. We just very simply pull from high to high and then <clears throat> continue from there. So that gives us a little bit of a, a pullback to um, the 413 low and then that one traded up to its negative 23. And then if you just take that anchor point and uh, move it up again, we have a, a pullback just close to the, ne to the uh, next 50% and a uh, close move uh, to the negative 23. And so that puts this 61.8 right at the low of the 13th. So that swing low would be on the S&P uh, 27.21 thereabouts. And so that's how I get the uh, what I'm looking at, swing low, 61.8 break as the, the failure point. <clears throat> and when that happens, if that happens, then I'll just take from highs uh, if this ends up being our high down to that low and ideally you know you get something like this where you dip in and then you bounce and then this support then acts as resistance and then you can you know short that super hard the trouble with shorting right here at the 50 um you know we've been gapping around quite a bit there's there's definitely a strong balance on both sides when you look at the market internals, the breadth, the advanced decline line. And through this last two weeks, you know, when we draw up a traditional long in here on like the intraday chart, but just crossing a couple of days, you can see, you know, we've broken a small break of a long. And then if we come in here, um, you know, you draw up a, a short, okay, we broke that. Uh, you know, we broke the next long here, and then we broke the next short. So a lot of back-to-back uh, -back breaks of longs and shorts. And when you get that, you want to kind of, you know, put some parameters, or if we if we draw a box around this level, we want to kind of be careful in that range and look to uh, buy the breakout or sell the breakdown or the retest to that level. So as far as swing trades go, you know, when the broader market is doing this, moving sideways, you get these little up moves and little down moves. Um, if we go to like an Amazon, Amazon really has not pulled back very far, you know, given the move up that it's had. If we do a very simple retracement, we can just see how far we are away from that halfway back. So, you know, a couple day sideways, this one day pullback really is not really enough for me to buy above the high of that bar, if this is indeed the low bar. Uh, you can buy the breakout. And the reason that waiting for the breakout in this case 
would make more sense than just buying above the high to low bar is because you can get this kind of a situation. You, know, you get a one day dip where this candle breaks the low of the prior bar. Well, one day is not really much of a pullback at all. I want to see three, four days. So if you just go right in, right in there and buy the, above the high of the next day, so like this candle breaks above this candle's high, well, then you can end up doing what exactly what we did, where you roll over, you put in a new low, or at least a lower low from the initial entry bar, signal bar, and then you keep going sideways. So if you just wait, kind of like I was just talking about in the S&P, and draw a box, and then buy above the high of that consolidation, then you're going to be sort of going with the momentum <clears throat> as opposed to being a little bit premature and uh, having risking getting stopped out in this uh, in this kind of sideways moment, uh, movement. Uh, Netflix, I believe, was about the same, uh, kind of moving sideways and uh, in, a, in a bull flag. Um, as far as shorts go, you would want to wait for, let me go to the S&P, you'd want to wait for an up move in the broader market. So let's say, you know, the next couple days, if we go higher and let's say we double top up here, that would be the day to place a short. Um, another day where I'd be looking to place a short, <clears throat> um, if, we, if we do break tomorrow's low, we have a chance of triggering a handful of shorts. The trouble is uh, not all of these shorts are sort of at their, the high of their pullback. Like a lot of the shorts have already sold off a bit. So <clears throat> I would rather see, you know, shorting this day or this day where it's the high of the rally, the high bar, we break below the low of that high bar. I like that better than say shorting here below today's low. And so that's why I say if you wait for the market to have an up day and then look to short those weak stocks the next day, you kind of get them at a, a little bit better prices and that broader market can lift up those short stocks that have a lot of short potential because they're, they're strong downtrends just because, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats, so to speak. So let's go to the intraday chart. Today, we took out a couple of gaps from yesterday and from Monday. Uh, you can see the other gaps that I have here. Uh, 2732.50 is below us on the ES, and then uh, 2869 is above us on the ES. And this, again, that swing low, which is 2711 on the uh, <clears throat> ES chart that I'm looking for to break before drawing up my retracement short. Same scenario as we just looked at on the S&P. We didn't quite tag up on the 50% long. We got close. Then we broke through the negative 23, and so that's where if you draw up the extension, trade it to a target, and then bring it up again, that gives you a 61.8 that lines up with the swing low, and so that's why I'm using that as my hard um, break point to then set up short if it happens. As far as intraday goes today, um, I wanted to talk about the 15-minute chart because there's a lot of good stuff that happens and it's a big enough time frame where it can have a lot of momentum when you, when you get into those kind of trades. So if we look at yesterday's low to high, the close, we kind of sat on the 50% retracement, we rallied, and then just like I was talking about before, um, a situation where we go through the negative 23 up to the uh, minus 618, that's a situation where you can come in and go instead of low to high, like this, you would come in and do a high to high, like that. And so when that breaks, so on the 15 minute chart, we have a low to high pullback, trade at the target, we can go high to high. When that 15 minute extension breaks, uh, it's just like a traditional. When it breaks to 618, you can turn it around and you can draw in the other direction and take a short. 
Uh, if we zoom in a little bit further and say, well, we're not going to use the prior day. We're just going to come in here and use the trading hours only from today. Um, you know, starting from the open and drawing our first retracement, we've got uh, a pullback to uh, nine, basically 28 tens. That goes to the negative 23 and then the negative 61.8. And same thing, you can go high to high here. You break the 61.8 and that sets up in a nice little short. So it really doesn't matter how big or small you're looking at the 15 minute chart. You can kind of use the same process to, to draw up your retracements. And then you come over to the 512 and that's when you start to place your trades in the 512. So this morning we had the first little pullback um, right away, like in, in the, uh, the, the first half hour, traded up and through. We ended up getting a high tick, I guess fairly late in the morning, about hour 45 in right here. And uh, that set up in the, the, a nice little short that I took here, 28. 33s off of a high tick, broke the swing low, and broke, um, we come up like this, broke the, uh, actually, let me rephrase that. So the, the high tick set up in, uh, in a short here. And so what is important and why counter trend trades can be so effective is because in order to, I kind of lost my spot here, in order to get to the next long setup, whether you draw a long traditional like this, okay, that's a 22, whether you draw a long extension like that, that also gives you a 28, 22. 2817 if you do the full halfway back and then if you draw up kind of like that uh, you end up with a um, 2828 so this extension is the highest 50% long meaning if I drew up a traditional like that the 50% is a little lower if I draw up like that is a little lower etc so in order to come into the next long, the market has to go down. If we're trading up here, we get a high tick. Okay, the market has to go down into the next long. So you can trade the short into the long. And sometimes, because it's counter trend, it builds enough momentum to start breaking through those longs. So one tactic is to target the long. And in this case, the extension happened to line up right at this 2828. Um, if you, let's say we just kind of pick a low here to go to highs and we get the 2822, I mean, you have room to go from the short 50% to the long 50%. And that's where the counter trend trade can be very effective. Because in order to get to the next long, you have to go down to it. And if you get a little bit of a bounce, you can ride that down. So while it's helpful to trade with the trend, when you start getting into, when you notice that you're going beyond, um, when you're going beyond negative 23% targets, and you go through it to the negative 61.8, that's a time to look for a little bit deeper pullback or at least the potential, you know, the market goes straight up. Uh, it's not gonna keep going straight up forever. And so you have the potential to take some uh, counter trend moves into the next longer play. So that's how, you know, I kind of use the 15 minute chart, a little bit bigger time frame in conjunction with the 512 for the entries. Uh, if you want to zoom in and get even more granular, you can come to the start of the day on the 512 tick chart and just start drawing from the very first swing high or swing low. 
And so if we start right at the open, we can say, okay, well, um, the short failed. And then, you know, we can, we can already tell that the, the traditional low to high is not going to trigger. But if we draw the high to high, we do get a pullback. And we can go up to the next one. It doesn't quite tag up there. If we go up to the next swing high that does, we have a uh, tag up here. And you can just kind of follow through, follow along basically all morning. Okay, you break the 60 win 8, you turn it around, you come, you draw up the short. Okay, you get a test of the short, it rolls over. It doesn't quite go all the way to the negative 23% target before it comes back and breaks. But the important thing to remember is you need to leave up the drawing until you break the 60 win 8 or until you hit the target. And that's a helpful way to um, keep your place, if you will. So even if you're not in a trade, leave that drawing up until you hit the target or break the 618. So by going through that you know, process all day, it also helps you get a sense of um, you know, how big or how dirty are the trades? Like, let's say I just pick a high to low here. And I say, okay, that's a 2818, and it trades in to a 1925. So about a point and a half of heat was taken on the trade. So it can help you assess, okay, is my stop too big? Is my stop just right? What is the average distance between the 50 and the 61? As the volatility shrinks, this distance shrinks. As the volatility expands, this distance expands. So between like a VIX, you know, 30 and 50, a two point to a three point stop is is great. If we're below VIX 30, you can go down to a point and a half. If we're above VIX 50, you know, three points is about the minimum you can use. And even if we go over to the 15 minute chart here, if I just pull, you know, any of these, let's say I'll go a little bit bigger here a 26 up to a 20, almost a 29 is three points on the 15 minute chart. So, you know, if you're trading the ES, or if you're trading the futures, you could take the 15 minute level and have a three point stop and still have it be outside of the 618 uh, and then ride it down to the the negative 23 percent target uh, you could also use the micro contract and and trade the bigger swings in the 15 so lots of opportunity especially now with those uh, with those micro es contracts uh, if you find yourself trading you know 8 10 12 micro contracts well then you know i would encourage you to switch to the big otherwise you're just gonna incur extra commission but it's nice having multiple contracts if you aren't able to trade, you know, three or four big ES contracts, if you're stuck trading one, then you only have one exit point. If you can trade, uh, if you switch to the micro and trade two or four, now all of a sudden you have multiple exit points and you can manage the trade a little better and stay in it longer. So uh, lots of good stuff today. Uh, if you have questions, leave them in the uh, comments below. I hope everyone has a great rest of your week and I'll talk to you soon.